My dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today's session I will discuss urine formation. By now we have understood that urine formation takes place in kidney but that does not mean that job of kidney is to form urine. Urine is formed which is the end product of filtrate after filtrate is processed through kidney thereby removing toxins and removing extra products and reabsorbing whatever should be reabsorbed. It is a complex phenomenon and the end product of this phenomenon is urine. So please do not misunderstand that work of kidney is to make urine. Work of kidney is to get rid the body from toxins and unwanted substances. I am showing you the diagram of nephron. You can appreciate the glomerulus, Bowman's capsule. Then coming down, you can see proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule, and collecting duct. Filtration will take place in the glomerulus. See the blood supply in the area of tubule or in the tubular area. You can see arteries, you can see veins. You have already seen the capillary bunch as glomerulus in the Bowman's capsule, which was made by afferent and efferent artery. Afferent and efferent both are arteries. Afferent is bigger in diameter, efferent is smaller in diameter, but both are arteries. You can see that is one capillary network of blood supply to the kidney and other blood supply is in the tubular area which you can see in the form of arteries and veins and both are very important. The filtration will take place at the glomerulus level but reabsorption and secretion will take place at the tubular level and in both the cases blood supply is involved because whatever is happening whether filtration, reabsorption or secretion it is happening in relation to blood. This slide shows you detail of glomerulus and glomerular filtration. Blood is entering the glomerular capillary through efferent and going out through efferent. This is one concept which should be very clear in your mind. Now, because there is difference of diameter, efferent being bigger than the efferent, so because of this difference, there is pressure on the blood which is flowing from bigger area to the smaller area or bigger diameter to the smaller diameter. Because of this pressure, the blood is filtered. Now, when I make the statement blood is filtered, I need to clarify a few points. What is filtered from blood? Blood has plasma, RBCs. WBCs, platelets, some proteins dissolved in plasma. So what is filtered? It is plasma minus protein. That means I am trying to say that solid particles RBC, WBC, platelets are not filtered. Only plasma is filtered that also protein dissolved in it will not be filtered. So, what will be the filtrate? Plasma minus protein. So, under normal conditions, in a natural way, if filtration is taking place, RBCs, WBCs, platelets should not be filtered. And if that happens, then it is diseased condition of kidney. If RBCs are filtered, then blood will come in the urine along with the urine. So, if solid particles of blood are filtered then that is kidney disorder. In the normal kidney that will not happen. So blood is filtered that means plasma is filtered. Why it is filtered? Because of pressure. From where the pressure comes? Because it is going from bigger diameter to a smaller diameter. 
from broader area to constricted area that is why there is pressure and because of this pressure the blood is filtered and that is why we can call it pressure filtration also. Please do not forget the fact that this is glomerular filtration indeed. Now glomerulus is nothing but the bunch of capillaries. Each capillary has a membrane which has some pores. These pores will allow passage of plasma and not the passage of protein RBCs, WBCs and platelets and hence this membrane is called ultra membrane. This filtrate is passing through ultra membrane under pressure and that is why this filtration can also be called ultra filtration. So now this glomerular filtration leading to filtrate is ultra filtration and also pressure filtration. Whatever the case may be the filtrate is collected in the cup the Bowman's capsule and it will then move to proximal tubule. A few more things are to be told in this connection. When filtration is taking place in the glomerulus, the capillary membrane cannot decide what should be filtered and what should not be except that plasma should be filtered and other things should not be. But what is good for the body and what is not good for the body will not be decided by plasma membrane. So that will also mean that good things will be filtered, bad things will be filtered. Whatever is in the plasma will go as filtrate. So now it is for kidney to judge what is good for the body should be reabsorbed, what is not good for the body should not be reabsorbed and if something was not filtered that should be secreted into the tubule and that is why the process will be constituted by filtration followed by reabsorption followed by secretion. So kidney is doing wonderful job by performing these actions by judging itself what should be retained and what should be thrown out. This is one concept which I wanted to give across. There is one another important concept that is blood is flowing continuously through efferent glomerulus efferent to the body then to the heart and again to efferent again to glomerulus again to efferent it is going round and round you know that blood flows in a circle. Now the speed of the blood flow in the kidney cannot be controlled when there is one heartbeat it gives out some blood it will move with that pace and then there is another heartbeat again blood comes out again will move with that pace and the pace is decided by the heartbeat and heartbeat is decided by the pacemaker. So blood is flowing with its pace without understanding that it is flowing through kidney. So it will flow with its pace and go to the efferent. Do you think that total plasma is filtered during that much of time? Or do you think blood will remain sitting in the glomerulus unless whole plasma is filtered? No, blood will go on moving and some plasma is filtered in that much of time and it moves on. It has already moved on, other blood has come that is filtered to some extent, again it has also moved on. So by calculations we know that with a normal pace of blood flow, some 21% of plasma is filtered, that is one fifth and fourth fifth remains in the blood in the efferent. It will reabsorb certain things and will become complete again. So one fifth is filtered, fourth fifth is not filtered. Now from this I take you to another point. Do you think only this one fifth of plasma had toxins and fourth fifth which was not filtered did not have any toxin? That also has toxin. What will happen to those toxins? Same blood will come again and again to kidney and that will be filtered. This is one concept, one more thing. This ultra membrane of the blood capillary in glomerulus which is permitting filtration will not decide what is good and what is bad. You can compare it with the 
chhanni or strainer which you use in your kitchen when you make tea when you use this chhanni or strainer for tea then the fluid will go down and tea leaves and ginger whatever you have put will remain in the strainer that means the pore size will decide what should go down and what should not go down so in case of tea the chhanni pore size will decide that what should go down and what should remain on strainer similarly the ultra membrane of glomerular capillaries the size of pores will decide what should be filtered and what should not be and that is why rbcs wbcs platelets and proteins having bigger size will not be filtered and all other things will be filtered whether good bad needed by the body or not needed by the body should be kept in the body should be excreted out in the body all those things will be filtered now this filtrate is containing all things which should be thrown and also those things which should be retained by the body when this comes to the tubular part in this case the proximal tubule pct there the first thing which will happen the reabsorption the water will be reabsorbed more than 90% glucose will be reabsorbed almost 100% because we don't have glucose in our body unless one is diabetic so reabsorption will take place mainly in the proximal tubule after that the filtrate reaches henle's loop which is dipping deep into the medulla and will have its role to play in the counter current mechanism that is concentration of urine there is phenomenon called dilution of urine there is phenomenon called concentration of urine you will dilute the urine if you have more water in the body more water should go out you will concentrate the urine if you have less water and hence you have to retain the water in the body hence urine should be concentrated you can experience yourself if you drink more water you give out diluted urine and more in quantity and if you drink less water you give out less urine and concentrated urine because body will retain as much water required to keep your body fluid at 0.5 Nine percent. So, loop of Henle helps in concentration of urine. The mechanism called counter current mechanism. DCT, the distal convoluted tubule, which will help in exchange of sodium ion, chloride ions across the tubular membrane for the purpose of counter current mechanism or for some other purposes. So, the membrane allows exchange. in various parts in various ways collecting duct is convoluted long duct it allows action of hormone like aldosterone and adh anti diuretic hormone collecting duct is a long convoluted tubule it allows action of two hormones the aldosterone from kidney and adh anti diuretic hormone from posterior pituitary as the name indicates anti diuretic anti to diuresis hence it will retain water in the body as much required i have told you that our body fluid is 0.9% so 0.9 gram of sodium and 1 liter of water so compared to how much sodium you have that much water will be retained now under the influence of hormone adh by active transport after this has happened as much sodium as much water required to be reabsorbed after that point it is urine so urine is formed and this urine has taken this filtrate has taken the full route and finally after the action of hormones it is converted to urine and now this urine is going out from the body through urinary opening carrying all the toxins all the extra substances all the balanced water and balanced sodium so i have made clear the points of filtration reabsorption secretion action of hormones the active action of hormones and the formation of urine with this 
we come to the end of this topic. Thank you. Thank you.